folks. Um, it's great to be here. Um, I'll, I'll start, um, I guess, with the only uh, Polish uh, that I know, um, which is this. Cicho Krestenio Rozmawiać. I used to teach Polish students. Um, and um, to the English speakers, it means something along the lines of, I love you all. <laughs> Um, I'm going to read two poems. The um, first is from the book of translations. I translated Horace, um, the Latin poet. Um, there's a, a, a marvelously sexist French um, saying about translation. Um, translation... <laughs> translation is like a woman. If she is beautiful, she is not faithful. And yet yeah, it's all, isn't it? So, um, I'm going to read one poem from this book of translations. Um, it's the first in the series. <clears throat> the innumerable years are full of knobbers, and the transitory habits of murking are forming the roaring Bosphorus, Surtees self made minge of spinach and up to Monsen. Edgar and Johnny clink to the raider's spunk, more splendid than the Starkey's thin pamphlets and halitosis on the neck of translations. You know how no cincture of ropes worry about you. Now I long to regurgitate burned stars on the sailors of KY. The seeps of whinges wax shall worm to no other women. I, more runched against than runching. Um, there was a long review of this book, a um, very generous review, um, which talked about the last line, which, which goes, more runched against than runching. And um, it talked about how the runch is the ridge of skin between the penis and the anus. And I didn't know that. I, uh, my Japanese wife, um, when she tries to say more lunched against than lunching, um, says more runched against than lunching. So, um, what's that? Runching? <laughs> Runch. Well, I don't know about runching. Runching is about um, well, but, but, well, well, good question. Yes, let's not bring cows into the penis and the anus, I suppose. Is <laughs> where we should stop. Um, there, I'm going to read um, my next poem. It's the last poem I'm going to read. It's in 72 sections. And uh, it's, it's uh, one of my own poems, but it will help you get apparent while I'm reading it. Um, the title is this. When asked about the difference between herself and Gina Lola Brigida, Sophia Loren replied, it is like the difference between a horse and a donkey, but I am not saying which is which. <laughs> <laughs> Advices for translators in 72 parts. One, rearrange letters alphabetically. Two, rearrange words alphabetically. Three, rearrange the letters according to view from a particular point on the page. Four, make the first letter of every word spell out the original text. Five, choose one word from each line of text. Six, use all words from the original text and arrange them arbitrarily. Seven, use all words from the original text and arrange them by chance. Eight, replace original words with headwords from the top columns of the bilingual dictionary. Nine, replace original words with words from the thesaurus. Ten, replace original words with antonyms. Eleven, replace original words with dictionary definitions. Twelve, replace all nouns with dictionary definitions. And then replace the nouns of those definitions with new dictionary definitions. Thirteen, make every line of the new poem an anagram of the original line. 14. Translate by playing Scrabble, starting with a key phrase such as the author's name and then using the new words to make a poem. 15. Replace the original noun by moving forward or backwards seven places in a dictionary. 16. Translate the poem without using the letter E. 17. Replace words maintaining only syntactical order. 18. Change the vocabulary of the source text while keeping the sense. 
19. Choose two texts of different genres and rewrite using the vocabulary of the other, separately or mixed. 20. Substitute text from a radically different semantic field. 21. Translate with additional comments made in the text body. 22. Translate using additional comments from the footnotes. 23. Translate with additional commentary in the form of letters to and or from the original poet. 24. Pick words from the original poem language, which are also words in the second language, and use those words to make a new poem. 25. Pick out words from the original and use them to make a new and different story. 26. Use only parts of words. 27. Translate only the words you know. 28. Take lines and make a coherent poem, putting the leftovers at the end of the line in brackets. 29. Use the translator's comments, responses and questions in the new poem. 30. Modernise and clarify the old poem in the new text. 31. Change the location of the original poem to, say, Vancouver. 32. Use pirate cowboy or surfer dude language as the basis for your translation. 33. Write the poem from memory. 34. Read multiple translations. Derange the senses and then write what remains without changing it. 35. Take the translated remembered poem and revise it. 36. On discovering errors in translation, keep them. 37. Deliberately mistranslate a poem. 38. Turn the poem into its opposite. 39. Write what the poem hides. 40. Translate with a different and particular focus as if that was the original poet's intention. 41. Replace consonants with vowels and vowels with consonants. 42. Keep the source vocab but reorder it. 43. Type the words into spell check. 44. Look up the words of the original language in a dictionary of the second language and replace them with the closest equivalent. 45. Translate what you understand and make up the rest. 46. Make a list of words in three columns arranged A to Z with one column for nouns, one for verbs and one for adjectives and then replace the corresponding words in the poem with the same letter and type. 47. Translate using Google search upon a phrase from the original poem, plus one other key phrase of the translator's choice, as in Emily meets Angie Dickinson. 48. Use any online translation machine repeatedly or however you see fit. 49. Substitute vocab using deliberately perverse or whimsical choices. 50. Paraphrase extremely large chunks of text. 51. Use sounds of the original poem to suggest anything that the translator can imagine. 52. Translate all lines using lines by other poets as their translation. 53. Transcreate using Geraldo de Campos as your model. 54. Write an entirely new poem and call it a translation of the old one. 55. <laughs> write a poem knowing only the title and line count and then collage with the source text. 56. Where the sounds of the original suggest words in the translator's language, use them to build a new poem. 57. Misremember either deliberately or unintentionally. 58. Translate a poem heard while running a shower. 59. Translate through glasses smeared with Vaseline. 60. Hold a book at arm's length and write what you read. 61. Create a homophonic base and then use it as a starting point for a book of new poems. 62. Rewrite pictograms and ideographs as Western text. 63. Translate paintings. 64. Translate using Rambo systems of colours for vowels. 65. Turn poems into cartoons. 66. Use the vocabulary and concerns of the original author to make new pieces and locate those poems in the context of actual translations without saying that you have done it. 67. Make up an exotic foreign persona and translate his or her work. 68. Remember that parody is not translation. 69. Trade. Do not betray and make sure that you trade at a profit. 70. Translate everything without thoughts, without words. Use an infinitely small vocabulary. 71. Remember that all translation is ecstatic relation. 
72, remember that all ecstatic relation is translation. Thank you.